Well, good morning, everybody. And I thoroughly love that video with its uh, acknowledging the history and where we came from, but that future focus and optimism that, um, that came through uh, brilliantly in the video. So delighted to be here this morning. Um, joining me today are a number of the team from the LCA. We've got Jim Wright, who's our Vice President of uh, Corporate Services and Chief Technology Information Officer. We've got Brittany and we've got Natalie and we've got other members of the team who are going to be here for the day at the, at the trade show as well. Um, so the OCA is, is proud to be a, a sponsor of practice opportunities and, and focused on dedicating uh, our efforts to your success now and beyond graduation. Before we start, let me congratulate you. I know it's been an intensely uh, busy four years for you and you're almost done. I heard the valedictorian speeches where uh, competition was this morning, so uh, uh, I know it's getting close to the end. And soon you'll be starting your careers. To quote Art Williams, a well-known U.S. businessman, um, for all fulfilling careers, he's not, I'm not telling you it's going to be easy, but I'm telling you it's going to be worth it. And to quote our own OCA board chair, Dr. Ken Broth, it's never been a better time to be a chiropractor, and I firmly believe that. The Ontario Chiropractic Association represents 80% of the chiropractors in, uh, in Ontario, and by membership, that's the fourth largest jurisdiction in the world. We are the definitive trusted voice for chiropractors and the profession in Ontario. And we promote chiropractic as an integral part of Ontario's broader health ecosystem. And you saw that reflected in the video as well. Very soon, we'll be launching a Made in Ontario opioid clinical tool that will be used by chiropractors in collaboration with family doctors and nurse practitioners to help solve the opioid crisis in this province. What an incredible contribution to the health and well-being of Ontarians. We also promote the profession through advertising and a strong digital presence. And I'm very excited to let you know that in a few weeks, you will be able to see our consumer-friendly new website that showcases this wonderful profession in its full scope of practice. And it will also have an enhanced members section that I think you'll really value. Come to our booth today. I know some of you are, uh, are with us on our Facebook and Instagram pages. But you will join when you start your practice a dynamic group of chiropractors. And I think when you listen to the profiles of our panelists here today, you'll see just what kind of opportunities exist for you in this uh, great profession. The OCA currently supports research directly and indirectly. And that research is focused on having a greater understanding of why chiropractic makes such a difference in patients' lives. Perhaps of most interest to you right now is the OCA um, as the OCA member is that you have access to our marketplace, um, which many of our members use. And you will find opportunities, as you will hear today, for roles and uh, practice opportunities around Ontario. Another benefit of being an OCA member is our on-demand webinars. And our members have earned over 3,000 continuing education hours through those OCA webinars uh, every year. While your formal education is over, Soon, we, you will be in a position to tap into our continuing education and learn about other things that will help you in your practice, from clinical care to business management, marketing, and legal matters. I do want to take a moment to talk about our OCA Aspire, which you will also have an opportunity to learn more about today. It's our leading cloud-based electronic health record and practice management solution. It was designed with chiropractors for chiropractors and it is designed to elevate your patient care and your practice. It integrates patient intake forms and captures and stores patient notes with one click, and it will empower you to collaborate with other health professionals in the circle of care. It's cloud-based, so it'll be available wherever you are from any device at any time, so do take an opportunity to check it out. What I'm really excited about with our OCA Aspire technology is the, the ability it will give us to collect data and information about practices in Ontario and to be able to use that to advance the profession in the best interests of patient care. If you are a student, you know that your membership is free in the OCA and that's a tremendous value to be part of an organization that represents the best of the profession. Once you graduate, your, your um, first year membership can continue to be free because instead of paying your first year fee, you can volunteer with the OCA for up to 20 hours. Almost three quarters of the graduates last year took that option. In your volunteer hours, you are learning and networking while serving the profession and the OCA, and you gain valuable experience that supports your success. I can't emphasize enough how important it is that as 
new graduates starting on your career, you begin to think about how you contribute to the greater good of the profession, whether it's in Ontario or Alberta, Alberta or Saskatchewan or wherever it is you choose to practice. Um, to learn a little bit more about how to support you, the students and new graduates, we launched our new OCA Student and New Graduate Advisory Council. This council, selected from nominees from Canada and the US, will give us valuable insight into providing education and supports that you and other students and graduates need to be successful in your practice, your patient care, and your career. So more information is available on the OCA Jumpstart Guide, and you'll receive a copy of that at graduation. Before I introduce the moderator and panelists, I want to leave you with one final thought. Be strong enough to stand alone. Be yourself enough to stand apart. But be wise enough to stand together when the time comes. And I say that because developing professional cohesion is really, really important to the success of this profession. And standing together uh, to support the best outcomes for patients, to support the best for the profession, is something that you should think about uh, as soon as you start out in your career. So now, welcome to our 2020 Practice Realities panel. Our experienced panelists will highlight their experiences as chiropractors. They'll share real life scenarios, advice, and ideas for your career. And I'm pleased to introduce our moder a moderator for the panel, Dr. Moaz Rajwani. Like you, Dr. Rajwani is a graduate of CMCC, but a little bit earlier than you guys in 1994. Uh, he is quite distinguished, and I know a lot about uh, Moaz because he works closely with the OCA, but he is the Vice President of Clinical Services at the North York Rehabilitation Center. He manages and works with a multidisciplinary team of medical consultants overseeing complex medical evaluations. He is also a valued consultant with the OCA. He has a long history of practical experience, including expertise in occupational health and disability management. Moaz serves on the board of the Michael Guerin Hospital, and he is the co-chair of the Coalition of Health Professional Associations in Auto Insurance Services in Ontario. Recently, he was appointed a member of the Stakeholder Advisory Committee for Health Service Providers at the Financial Services Regulatory Authority of Ontario. He serves as a board member for the World Spine Care, and is the past president of the Canadian Society of Chiropractic Evaluators. Moas is a recipient of the Queen's Golden Jubilee Volunteer Award, and he was honored with the OCA Community Service Award and is recognized by the Ministry of Citizenship for 25 years of service to the community. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Rajwani. Thank you, Carolyn, and uh, as always, a pleasure to be here. Uh, 1994 is a long time ago. The good news is my clinicians are still here. I see them in the back. Uh, it makes me feel a little bit younger. So uh, thanks for coming out this morning. And uh, this year the panel will cover, uncover realistic expectations for all of you and the challenges that you may experience in graduation, which is only a few weeks away. They're going to identify some strategies for you, support uh, that you have as available to you, and navigate you through their career paths. And we're hoping that through their career paths, uh, it will inspire you for your future and your career. We have a wide range of life experiences, uh, from young to old, from male to female, from uh, mothers and fathers. And so I hope today, in the little time that we have together, you get a glimpse of what's happening. First, you're going to hear from each panelist. They're going to tell you about themselves, their career, and what's been most rewarding about being part of the profession. Then I will moderate some questions uh, that we've got, uh, that you've seen. And finally, the hope is that you'll be participating. This is about you guys. It's about you asking questions. It's about you engaging. Some of that will happen in the panel, and I'm hoping some of it will happen throughout the day. But if you have any questions, uh, you can stand up. Uh, Natalie, uh, who's here in the front, can facilitate that for you. She's got a wireless mic. She's got uh, her reading glasses on so that if she sends you something in writing, she can read it for us. And um, she will be there to support that process. If uh, you speak as loud as you can. I will repeat the question so all of your classmates can hear the question as well. Now, let's meet the panelists. I would like to introduce first Dr. Dwight Chapin. 
Dr. Chapin graduated from CMCC in 1999. He co-owns and operates High Point Wellness Center, a large multidisciplinary clinic in Mississauga. He also leads corporate wellness programs for nationally recognized corporations, including the Globe and Mail. In fact, he runs a practice on site for the Globe employees and serves as their healthcare advisor. And he'll share some of that with you today. As a trusted neuromuscular expert, his clinical and published work with the Globe has showcased chiropractic in a very positive light. In his private practice, he successfully demonstrates the role of chiropractors and can play an acute, how they play a role in acute and preventative care, corporate health, and sports performance. He's the team chiro for the Toronto Argos. He co-authored workplace wellness e-learning modules for the Canadian Centre for Occupational Health and Safety. He's lectured extensively on human performance and injury prevention. And he represented us very proudly on Parliament Hill on World Spine Care Day. We're honoured to have Dr. Chapin with us. He was the 2018 Chiropractor of the Year, uh, uh, awarded by the OCA. Thank you so much, Dwight, for joining us today. Please share your thoughts. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> good morning, everyone. I have been looking forward to today and the opportunity to spend some time with hopefully each of you. I remember back in the late 90s, walking into a room very similar to this. It was at the old college at Bayview and Eglinton, of course. But as an intern, walking into an event that was, that was similar to this panel discussion this morning, and I, I was hit by an immediate sense of that light at the end of the tunnel, how close graduation was. And there was excitement, and there was anticipation, and there was a little bit of fear. And as I took my seat and I listened to the stories told by the professionals on the panel, I, sud I suddenly had this sense of, wow, there is a real big knowledge gap between where I felt I was as an intern and where the accomplished Kairos at the table were practicing from. And um, let me tell you, coming back today from the other side of that gap, it is nowhere near as large as you think it is. The graduation is right there for you. It is a wonderful time to enter the profession. And as you do so, when you walk the stage, you will have all the skills that you do need. I started my practice as an associate, uh, the day after I got the green light from the CCO and the CCPA, I was open for business. And in my first year, this was a clinic that was in Midtown Toronto, I learned a lot about myself, about how I wanted to practice, how I didn't want to practice. My strengths and my weaknesses were quickly revealed, and that gave me a sense of, of what it is that I needed as a young graduate, and what I wanted from a mentor, and what I wanted to see with respect to how my practice and my, my professional career would, would advance. So some of those lessons were real tough, and as we had a chance to, to talk one-on-one -on -one today, I hope to share some of those stories with you. But they were valuable lessons that have continued to serve me very well my, my whole career. At the end of my first year I decided that the fit in that clinic was not right and I left that clinic and I joined a well-established office in Mississauga again as an associate and I worked Tuesdays and Thursdays seven to seven with an hour off between one and two and I worked Saturdays eight to two and at the end of my very first week I had billed more in that week than I had in my best month to that point I was shocked because it really didn't feel like I was doing anything all that differently but the difference was that I was working with a chiropractor who was engaged in my growth and development. And our practice philosophies were aligned. And so the work that I was doing with patients felt authentic to me and felt authentic to the patient. There was great continuity of care. And so my practice really started to take off at that point. And with the help of, of my, my mentor, inside a year, I was in a position to buy the practice from him. So we essentially swapped roles, at least on paper. He became my associate. And at that point, that was back in 
uh, 2001, there were two of us, two Kairos, and two support staff. Fast forward 19 years later, my team has now uh, grown to 32. We have a team of chiros, physios, massage therapists, naturopathic doctors, registered dietitians, fitness experts, and an amazing admin team that keeps the whole clinic operating. And um, the clinic now has three main divisions. We have a multidisciplinary clinic that focuses on patient-centered collaborative care. We've developed a corporate wellness division where we put teams of clinicians on site into different businesses, provide care for employees, and also deliver customized corporate wellness programs focused on health promotion and, and in some cases also injury prevention. And then we have a sports performance division where we're working individually with athletes and with teams on injury prevention and sports specific performance. So as I sat where you guys sit as an intern, I had no idea the path my career would take. I, I had no sense of, of the opportunity or um, the excitement that, that would happen and as quickly as it would come, come to me. And so I would encourage you all from this point forward, if you're not already, to think big, to really keep an open mind. And, um, and as, you, as you reach graduation and cross that stage, as doctors of chiropractic, my, my key message to you today is when you become a DC, the public will look to you as a neuromusculoskeletal expert. And my advice is own that, master it, become the expert. It's what's expected of you. But within that niche, you can find, within that scope, you can find your niche where you feel authentic in the care that you deliver. And when you do so, and you focus on that niche with a passion and an intention, you, patients will seek you out. So for me, that was studying movement patterns and understanding tissue adaptation as it relates to how a body moves, how a body performs. And I was able to take that and apply it to practice and apply it to corporate health and apply it to athletics. So it didn't matter if you were an editor trapped at a desk or you were a professional quarterback. We could take tissue adaptation, understand how and, and what chiropractic could do to elevate your performance. So we are all here today because we're invested in you and we want to see you guys leave CMCC and, and uh, take your first step forward in a positive direction. So I would encourage you to dig in today, roll up your sleeves, and really take advantage of, of the opportunities that you have and will have today to, to, to talk. So thank you. Thank you, Dwight. <laughs> Our next panelist is Dr. Evelyn Locke. Dr. Locke is a chiropractor and kinesiologist at Mount Sinai Hospital in the Dovigi Orthopedics Sports Medicine Clinic and Pure Motion Center. At Mount Sinai, Dr. Locke works with a multidisciplinary team of medical and allied health professionals. She has a passion for highlighting the role of chiropractors in collaborative care, global health, and treating orofacial pain, chronic pain, and concussions. She created and is the head of the musculoskeletal health program at Bridge to Health. The, this humanitarian organization partners with non-for-profit organizations in low resource settings in East Africa. Its goal is to improve medical and dental health care delivery systems, teach local health care workers, and educate residents. Aside from the clinical practice, Dr. Locke takes on student learners from various healthcare professional programs. She presents at global health conferences and provides healthcare coverage at sporting events. She was honored with the OCA's 2019 Community Relations Award at our gala ceremony in Toronto. And as you can see, Evelyn is soon to give birth. <laughs> so congratulations on behalf of all of us. And thank you for joining us uh, this morning, Evelyn. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick intro. I am a 2010 CMCC grad, so I've been in practice about 10 years now. And when I was in your shoes, I, sitting there, I didn't really have a vision for my career. I knew some things that I wanted to do. I wanted to have an evidence-based practice. I wanted to treat athletes. 
um, and I knew I didn't want to have a high volume practice, but other than that, I wasn't really sure. Um, so if I could, I was thinking this morning, if I could speak to myself, my fourth year self, um, what would I say? And I think the first thing I would say is, I'm really happy right now, and, and that's, I wish that I had used that as a way to sort of motivate and understand what decisions to make, because, you know, of all the things I wanted to do and thought I wanted to do, um, I think the most important thing would, that I wish that I knew was that I was going to wake up happy going to work every day still. Um, the other thing I was going to say that I have in common, just thinking about the fact that I am about to give birth, is that it is scary. <laughs> Um, when you're graduating, <laughs> like I've been a chiropractor for 10 years now, I know what's up, I know what's going on, but I've never been a parent, and so I think that's something that I probably have in common with you guys. I don't know what I'm getting into. <laughs> 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 but I was talking to Dr. Russo earlier today, and we were saying that fear is a good thing. You know, I, I think that it's, it's, it's nice to be fearful because it, it helps you to know that you're still engaged, um, sort of leads you to making sure you're, you know, checking yourself and, and reading research and, and, you know, taking the time to, to really care about your patients. And so it's okay to be afraid. Um, I'm, I'm still afraid all the time. Um, and I still think I'm stupid all the time. We talked about this <laughs> earlier too. Like, <laughs> you know, sometimes you get a case and uh, we were talking, I was talking to a colleague yesterday about how sometimes you'll just make an excuse to leave the room because you just have to think like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, that case. <laughs> and that's okay. You don't get to come out and talk to a clinician. Because you're, it's you now. <laughs> but that's okay. Don't don't worry. Um, so they asked us to come up with a key message, and and the key message that I wanted to say was that um, use your sort of genuine feelings and your and your genuine passions about you know what kind of chiropractor you think you want to be or you want to be, and use that to seek out and follow opportunities that come up. Um, it's okay to make mistakes, uh, as long as you learn from it and sort of reevaluate where you're at. Um, Talk to everyone. You have a lot of time when you first graduate. Talk to everyone and, and sort of let those, you know, experiences inform where you're going to go um, forward in your path in your career. And uh, Moaz was saying to think about, um, you know, what's been the most rewarding part of um, my career so far. And it made me think about my CMCC interview. <laughs> and they ask you, you know, why do you want to be a chiropractor? And as cliche as it sounds, my answer, which I'm sure everyone's answer was, was that I wanted to help people. <laughs> <laughs> but that is the most rewarding part. <laughs> it's, it's fun to, to help people. I remember graduating and thinking, like, am I actually going to be able to help people? I've been kind of pretending this whole time. Um, <laughs> and, like, we have this great, we do this great job, and we, we get a chance to actually make a difference in people's lives. And for me especially, I'm really passionate about... Um, sort of showing the world what chiropractors can do and because uh, I think that the world doesn't really know yet and so um, I just wanted to say that that has been really rewarding and even if it's scary um, it's been well worth it a lot of hard work but well worth it so thanks for having me here thank you Evelyn okay <laughs> our third panelist today Dr. Elena Russo Dr. Russo is a recent graduate in the class of 2018. She was actively involved at CMCC and helped facilitate the Soft Tissue Club. She worked on student council as a graduate and representative, a student mentor and a pod leader, and she was chosen to be a volunteer at the Dominican Republic Outreach Program at C with CMCC. After graduating, Dr. Russo continued her relationship with CMCC helping with the development of objective, structured clinical examinations. She continues to do research and write lit reviews, assessing chiropractic knowledge of pregnancy care. And also, she contributed to a case study discussing transverse myelitis. Dr. Russo is an associate at two chiropractic clinics, one in Tottenham and the other in, is located in a physician's office in Mississauga. She uses these opportunities to network with other health specialists, communities to promote chiropractic care. In fact, she created a prenatal yoga and learn program with a registered nurse and a prenatal yoga instructor. Dr. Russo has just started her own business, Russo Family Chiropractic, which provides in-home chiropractic care to families in the Caledon community. She was honored along with the rest of the panel. In 2019, she won the recent graduate award at our gala in Toronto 
Please join me in welcoming Alana. Hi everyone, good morning. Um, so as the other panelists talked about remembering that they were here, I literally remember because I sat there like two years ago <laughs> drinking my coffee, probably on my phone, not really listening much. Um, but it's very familiar to me to be in this space, but it's very weird to be on the other side. Um, when I was walking in today, it was almost like that rush of like anxiety and I'm like, am I here to write a test or something? And then I was like, whoa, 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 okay, wait, no, different kind of anxiety. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's really nice to be here. Um, and I, I really just wanna shine some light because I do remember being in your shoes very recently. And I remember being very stressed. And I remember feeling like it was like a race or something between everybody. And it was, it was like, oh, I heard they have an associate position. Oh, they got a contract. And I was like, I got nothing. And I didn't know what path I was gonna be on. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I always just assumed I would become an associate because I thought that's what I, what everyone else was doing. Um, and I actually had some wisdom bestowed on me by many mentors that I see in this room. Um, one of them was Dr. Steinman. And he pulled me aside and said, you should start your own business. And I said, no way. <laughs> um, and I did that. And I, if you had asked me two years ago if I would have done that, I would have said you were out of your mind. And I'm here to tell you that um, the path that you take might not necessarily be the path that you think you're gonna take and that it's okay. And having that question mark is actually a really, really big opportunity to do whatever you want. Um, so to give you a little bit of background on myself, I have a little bit of a, of a different uh, background to start. So I don't have a kinesiology background. Um, I went to McMaster for psychology, neuroscience and behavior. And that already made me feel like a black sheep in my class because I never took anatomy coming into CMCC. Um, but I took this one course at Mac and it was called the Neural Mechanisms of Human Movement. And I was like, whatever this is, I wanna do it. And so I was like, and how can I make that help people? And I literally Googled those two things together and came up with chiropractic. So my career was based on a Google search. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and, which is true, and so I had never seen a chiropractor before coming to CMCC, and I had, and then what I got in and thought maybe I should shadow one, and shadowed a couple and said, okay, I really, I really like this. Like this is nice. This one-on-one -on -one interaction, these connections that are being making. People were really happy when they left, and I was like, okay, I like that too, um, and I can confirm that that does happen. People leave your office feeling really happy, and it's great. Um, so I, I went through CMC. CC and um, I, I was quite involved, but it was also really challenging. I think that sometimes when you leave practice, like when you leave and go into practice, you forget how much how stressful it is to be a student. Um, my sister's actually in her second year, and she and we, we I was just talking with Dr. Log about this. I said, I my, my she calls me out all the time because I'll say, yeah, but you're you're gonna be fine. And she said, you you hated when people said that to you, and I'm like. Oh, you're right. I used to complain a lot about that because when you when you leave practice, every everyone goes, "Oh, but it just works out because it worked out for us. Like we're we're here right now." But you're on the end right now where you're like, "But what if it doesn't work out?" And I'm here to tell you that's okay. Um, so when I went to my practice opportunity day, I was hoping to find my golden opportunity, um, and I didn't, which is fine. And I'd actually took it upon myself, and I just got to a point, and I was in, I was at St. Mike's Doctor's Diamond, and I was just in between patients, like cold emailing everywhere. I was like, where do I want to work? And I probably emailed like a hundred clinics, and one of them was in Tottenham with Dr. Jocelyn Cox, who actually works at the college, um, and she said that yeah, I would love an associate, let's talk. And um, so that's how I got my first job was via cold email. And um, so it's at one of my practices is in Tottenham. It's at a massage clinic um, and they also have a yoga studio. And then my other um, practice I joined a little bit later on. It's in Mississauga in a medical doctor office with Dr. Manisha Suri, who also works here. And I just saw an ad on the OCA marketplace. So great plug right there. And um, that was while I was practicing. I thought, you know, I'm only here three days a week. How could I, how could I um, start? And another point to make is I actually started practicing in October, which another point of anxiety that I was like, oh my goodness, everyone's gonna think that I couldn't find a job and that was really like, oh, I'm so stupid. And 
it actually worked out fantastic. Um, I had the opportunity to join a campaign team um, in the city of Brampton at a, at a municipal election. So for like four months, I was leading a campaign team while all of my friends were starting their careers. And, and for some reason, I thought that would put me behind. But it actually made me build some really, really, really amazing contacts and start to basically network with um, the community, network with other people, get my name out there. Um, even just practicing talking to people, I had to knock on doors and canvas. Um, and, and so I always joked that I was like the doctor secretary of the, of the campaign because I would like write emails for people. And so it actually shaped my practice to be the way it is. So um, I'm in Tottenham, I'm in Mississauga in a medical doctor office. And then to my point, I started my own practice. So I do in-home chiropractic care. I'll explain a little bit more about it um, in, in our questioning, but basically I bring my table to my patients um, and I just recently started it and so far it's been, it's been going amazing. So if I could take one point out of today, um, it would be to think outside the box. If, um, think, get creative. Uh, nothing has to be cookie cutter. It doesn't have to be associateship or open up your own practice. You can do with it what you want. Um, and be brave, uh, it's because some of the things are s very scary <laughs> and it doesn't go away. And basically just to, to find, your, find what you love in your niche and the most rewarding part is I swear, sometimes it doesn't feel like this in clinic, but you get people better and it's amazing. <laughs> they really, really appreciate you. And when you were saying about what you were thinking about today, what's your favorite part? Um, it kind of made me reflect on something. I had a patient yesterday who missed her appointment last week and felt so horrible that she brought me flowers yesterday. And I'm like, it, it, I, I told, I didn't, I was, I, there was no problem, it was not an issue. She just said, I felt so horrible to leave you high and dry. Even though she called me right after and said she was so sorry and, and that she brought me flowers. And I, and I just thought that really spoke to the testimony of some of the people that you're gonna get the pleasure of working with um, in, your, in your practice. Thank you. So, so what a great panelist you guys have. Le, you know, what did I hear? I heard happiness. Um, you're going to graduate and you're going to be happy. That's a pretty good, uh, <laughs> that's going to be a pretty good thing. And, and, and you know, I, I think about it myself. I, I do a lot of stuff um, and I work in different environments, but the, when I'm with my patient and I'm uh, able to facilitate their recovery, there's nothing that makes you feel better. And you could be on a lecture stand and make everybody laugh, but it's not the same as when you help that patient get better, and I think that's what I heard. I also heard diversity of practice. Uh, 25 years ago when I graduated, uh, there was two or three options you guys had. You could be an associate, you could buy a practice, or you could uh, start your own. Today, as you heard from this group, your, uh, your desires, your engagements are so different. What you can achieve working with others, other healthcare providers, multidisciplinary teams, employers, sports, yoga, uh, as you start thinking about what it means to be a neuromusculoskeletal specialist, as you heard. So you have great uh, opportunity today to engage with this group, and I'm gonna start that now by posing some questions to them and I'm hoping that that starts to stimulate some conversation.